The Santa Fe Trail was a 19th century transportation route through central North America that connected Independence, Missouri with Santa Fe, New Mexico. Pioneered in 1821 by William Becknell, it served as a vital commercial highway until the introduction of the railroad to Santa Fe in 1880. Santa Fe was near the end of the El Camino Real de Tierra Adentro, which carried trade from Mexico City. The route skirted the northern edge and crossed the northwestern corner of Comancheria, the territory of the Comanches, who demanded compensation for granting passage to the trail, and represented another market for American traders. Comanche raiding farther south in Mexico isolated New Mexico, making it more dependent on the American trade, and provided the Comanches with a steady supply of horses for sale. By the 1840s, trail traffic along the Arkansas Valley was so heavy that bison herds could not reach important seasonal grazing land, contributing to their collapse, which in turn hastened the decline of Comanche power in the region. The American Army used the trail route in 1846 for the invasion of New Mexico during the Mexican American War. After the U.S. acquisition of the Southwest ending the war, the trail helped open the region to U.S. economic development and settlement, playing a vital role in the expansion of the U.S. into the lands it had acquired. Required. The road route is commemorated today by the National Park Service as the Santa Fe National Historic Trail. A highway route that roughly follows the trail's path through the entire length of Kansas, the southeast corner of Colorado and northern New Mexico has been designated as the Santa Fe Trail National Scenic Byway. History The Santa Fe Trail was a transportation route opened by the Spaniards at the end of the 18th century and used afterwards by the Americans in the 19th century, crossing the southwest of North America connecting Independence, Missouri with Santa Fe, New Mexico. The French explorer Pedro Ville pioneered the route in 1792 and the Santa Fe Trail was established in 1828 to take advantage of new trade opportunities with Mexico, which had just won independence from Spain in the Mexican War of Independence. The trail was used to haul manufactured goods from the state of Missouri in the United States to Santa Fe, which was in the northern Mexican state of Nuevo Mexico. The wagon trains followed various emigrant trails to points west as people responded to the opportunity to hold free land, and as the political philosophy of Manifest Destiny dominated national political discussions. Connecting riverboat port cities and their wagon train outfitters to western destinations, the trail was a fundamentally important trade route, carrying manufactured products from the central plains of United States to the trail head towns St. Joseph and Independence, Missouri. In the 1820s to 30s, it was also sporadically important in the reverse trade, carrying foods and supplies to the fur trappers and mountain men opening the remote northwest, especially in the interior northwest, Idaho, Wyoming, Colorado, and Montana, connecting via mule trail, trappers trails to points north to supply the lucrative overland fur trade. Topic: <laughs> North-South Trade Santa Fe was near the northern terminus of El Camino Real de Tierra Adentro, which led overland from Mexico City to San Juan Pueblo, New Mexico. The limited trade traffic transited the site that would become Fort Bent in Colorado directly on the Santa Fe Trail and the short-lived trading fort name, owner, management, dates all uncertain that sat astride the Trappers Trail and Oregon Trail junction point. This post was only eight miles east of the site of Fort John now feet. Laramie, CA 1833 on what became the Oregon Trail 1832 to 34. The lost fort was on the same site where Fort Bernard was later founded 1866 in the eastern Oregon country, Wyoming. That Fort Bernard ran cargo mule trains to the Santa Fe is historically certain. The earlier fort and its traders are less certain, suggesting that they might have been independents and not employees of the large fur companies. Regardless of the lack of explicit documents, it is known the light trading with Mexico used the trail and Trapper's Trail. Topic: <laughs> Importance of Santa Fe. In 1825, the merchant Manuel Escudero of Chihuahua was commissioned by New Mexico Governor Bartolomé Baca to negotiate in Washington for opening US borders to traders from Mexico. 
Beginning in 1826, prominent aristocratic families of New Mexicans, such as the Chavezes, Armillos, Pereyas and Oteros entered into the commerce along the trail, such that by 1843, traders from New Mexico and Chihuahua had become the majority of traders involved in the traffic of goods over the Santa Fe Trail. In 1835, Mexico City had sent Albino Perez to govern the Department of New Mexico as Jefe Politico political chief or governor and as commanding military officer. In 1837, the forces of Rio Arriba, the Upper Rio Grande, i.e., Northern New Mexico, rebelled against Perez's enforcement of the recent Mexican Constitution, new revenue laws taxing Santa Fe commerce and entertainment, and the large grants of New Mexico land to wealthy Mexicans. New Mexicans had grown to appreciate the relative freedoms of a frontier remote from Mexico City. The rebels defeated and executed Governor Albino Perez, but were later ousted by the forces of Rio Abajo the Lower Rio Grande, or Southern New Mexico led by Manuel Armillo. <laughs> <laughs> Conflict between Texas and Mexico The Republic of Texas claimed Santa Fe as part of the territory north and east of the Rio Grande claimed by both Mexico and Texas following its secession from Mexico in 1836. In 1841, a small military and trading expedition departed from Austin, Texas representing the Republic of Texas and their president Mirabeau B. Lamar. Their aim was to persuade the people of Santa Fe and New Mexico to relinquish control over the territory under dispute with Mexico, and over the associated Santa Fe Trail commerce. Having knowledge of the recent political disturbances, they believed that they might be welcomed by the rebellious faction in New Mexico. Known as the Texan Santa Fe Expedition, the Texans encountered many difficulties and were subsequently captured by Governor Armillo's Mexican army under less than honest negotiations. They were then subjected to harsh and austere treatment during a tortuous forced march to Mexico City, for trial and imprisonment. In 1842, Colonel William A. Christie wrote the President of Texas, Sam Houston, requesting support for a scheme by Charles Warfield to raise forces to overthrow the Mexican provinces of New Mexico and Chihuahua and return half of the spoils to the Republic of Texas. Sam Houston agreed, with the provision that the operation be held under the strictest secrecy. Charles was made a colonel and attempted to raise volunteers in Texas, St. Louis, and the Southern Rockies for a Warfield expedition. He recruited John McDaniel and a small band of men in the proximate vicinity of St. Louis, giving McDaniel the rank of a Texas captain. After Charles headed toward the Rockies with a companion, McDaniel led a robbery in the April, 1843 in present-day Rice County, Kansas of a sparsely manned Santa Fe Trail trading caravan, resulting in the murder of its leader Antonio José Chávez, the son of a former governor Francisco Xavier Chávez of New Mexico. It was reported that Warfield was unaware of the crime, which later resulted in the execution of McDaniel and one accomplice, and in the imprisonment of those participants whom U.S. authorities were able to hunt down. The news media reported that Americans and Mexicans were outraged by the crime. Local merchants and citizens at the U.S. end of the Santa Fe Trail demanded justice and a return to the stable commerce that their economy had grown to depend upon. After the murder of Chavez, Warfield began limited military hostilities using recruits from the Southern Rockies. He made an unprovoked attack on Mexican troops outside of Mora, New Mexico, leaving five dead. Warfield's horses were lost in wagon mound to the Mexican forces which had made chase, and after reaching Bent's Fort on foot, Warfield's men disbanded. In February, 1843 Colonel Jacob Snively had received a commission to intercept Mexican caravans along the Santa Fe Trail, similar to the commission received by Warfield the year prior. After disbanding the volunteers under his command, Warfield located and joined the 190-man Texas Battalion of Invincibles. Under the command of Snively, New Mexico Governor Manuel Armillo led Mexican troops out of Santa Fe for the protection of the incoming caravans, but after the Invincibles wiped out an advanced party led by Captain Ventura Lovato, the governor retreated. Following this battle, Snively's force was reduced to little over 100 men due to resignations. The Snively expedition plan was to plunder Mexican merchant caravans on territory claimed by Texas, in retaliation for recent Texian executions and Mexican invasions, but it was quickly arrested and disarmed by United States escorting troops. Captain Philip Street. George Cook allowed the Invincibles to return to Texas after disarming them. 
Topic Mother of the Railroad In 1863, with all the political bickering over railroad legislation, entrepreneurs opened their pockets and set their sights on the American Southwest leading to the gradual construction east to west of the Atchison, Topeka and Santa Fe Railway, the name eponymously reflecting the intentions of the founders, the expected eastern terminus to be in Atchison, Kansas. Inside Kansas, the AT and SF roadbed roughly paralleled the Santa Fe Trail west of Topeka as it expanded between 1868 and 1874. When a railroad bridge was built across the Missouri River to connect eastern markets to the Dodge City Cattle Trail and Colorado coal mines, the railroad spurred the growth of Kansas City. Kansas City was on the opposite shore from St. Joseph, Missouri, one of several trailhead towns feeding settlers into the American West. Building the railway so that it extended westwards to destinations in and beyond the New Mexico border was delayed and kept the fledgling railroad gasping for cash. In a move to bootstrap their own base market, the railway began offering packaged shopping excursion deals to potential buyers desiring to look over a real estate parcel. The railroad began to discount such trips to visit its land offices and gave back the ticket price as part of the purchase price, if a sale was concluded. The railroad's sale of its land granted by Congress fostered growth of new towns and businesses along its route, which generated railway traffic and revenues. With this financial base, the railway extended west, gradually adding new connections through rougher west country along the western trail. With the development of rail transport, traffic on the trail soon dropped to merely local trade. In a sense, after World War I the trail was reborn, by the 1920s it gradually became paved automobile roads. Route The eastern end of the trail was in the central Missouri town of Franklin on the north bank of the Missouri River. The route across Missouri first used by Becknell followed portions of the existing Osage Trace and the Medicine Trails. West of Franklin, the trail crossed the Missouri near Arrow Rock, after which it followed roughly the route of present-day U.S. Route 24. It passed north of Marshall, through Lexington to Fort Osage, then to Independence. Independence was also one of the historic jumping-off points for the Oregon and California trails. West of Independence, it roughly followed the route of U.S. Route 56 from near the town of Olathe to the western border of Kansas. It enters Colorado, cutting across the southeast corner of the state before entering New Mexico. The section of the trail between Independence and Olathe was also used by immigrants on the California and Oregon trails, which branched off to the northwest near Gardner, Kansas. From Olathe, the trail passed through the towns of Baldwin City, Burlingame, and Council Grove, then swung west of McPherson to the town of Lyons. West of Lyons the trail followed nearly the route of present-day Highway 56 to Great Bend. Ruts in the earth made from the trail are still visible in several locations Ralph's ruts are visible in aerial photos at 38.3595926.4 degrees north 98.4222550.2 degrees west, 38.3595926.4, minus 98.4222550.2. At Great Bend, the trail encountered the Arkansas River. Branches of the trail followed both sides of the river upstream to Dodge City and Garden City. West of Garden City in southwestern Kansas the trail splits into two branches. One of the branches, called the Mountain Route or the Upper Crossing through Raton Pass of the Arkansas River, continued to follow the Arkansas upstream in southeastern Colorado to the town of La Junta. At La Junta, the trail continued south into New Mexico to Fort Union at Watrous. The other main branch, called the Cimarron Cutoff or Cimarron Crossing or Middle Crossing cut southwest across the Cimarron Desert also known as the Waterscrape or La Hornada to the valley of the Cimarron River near the town of Ulysses and Elkhart then continued toward Boise City, Oklahoma, to Clayton, New Mexico, joining up with Northern Branch at Fort Union. This route was generally very hazardous because it had very little water. In fact, the Cimarron River was one of the only sources of water along this branch of the trail. From Watrous, the reunited branches continued southward to Santa Fe. Part of this route has been designated a National Scenic Byway. Challenges Travelers faced many hardships along the Santa Fe Trail. 
The trail was a challenging 900 miles of arid plains, desert, and mountains. The natural climate was an as continental, very hot and dry summers, coupled with long and bitterly cold winters. Freshwater was scarce, and the high steppe-like plains are nearly treeless. Water flows in the Pecos, Arkansas, Cimarron, and Canadian rivers that drain the region vary by 90 or more percent in their flows during an average year. Also on this trail, unlike the Oregon Trail, there was a serious danger of Native American attacks, for neither the Comanches nor the Apaches of the Southern High Plains tolerated trespassers. In 1825, Congress voted for federal protection for the Santa Fe Trail, even though much of it lay in the Mexican territory. Lack of food and water also made the trail very risky. Weather conditions, like huge lightning storms, gave the travelers even more difficulty. If a storm developed, there was often no place to take shelter and the livestock could get spooked. Rattlesnakes often posed a threat, and many people died due to snakebite. The caravan size increased later on to prevent Native American raids. The travelers also packed more oxen instead of mules because the Native Americans did not want to risk raiding the caravans only for some oxen. Topic: <laughs> Historic preservation. Segments of this trail in Missouri, Kansas, Oklahoma, and New Mexico are listed on the National Register of Historic Places. In Missouri, this includes the 85th and Manchester Three Trails trail segment, Arrow Rock Ferry Landing, Santa Fe Trail Grand Pass Trail segments, and Santa Fe Trail Saline County Trail segments. The longest clearly identifiable section of the trail, Santa Fe Trail Remains, near Dodge City, Kansas, is listed as a National Historic Landmark. In Colorado, Santa Fe Trail Mountain Route Bent's New Fort is included on the National Register. Notable features Misereiro Rock Arrow Rock Landing, Santa Fe Spring, Houston Tavern Harvey Spring, Weinrich Rutz Independence Santa Fe Trail Ruts, Lower Independence Blue Mills Landing, Upper Independence Wayne City Landing. Kansas City Westport Landing, Kansas Kansas City Shawnee Mission, Big Blue River Crossing. Council Grove Com Mission, Neosho River Crossing, Hermit's Cave, Last Chance Store, Council Oak, Post Office Oak. Fort Larned National Historic Site. Fort Dodge, Jackson's Grove and Island, Santa Fe Trail Ruts, Middle Crossing, Point of Rocks, Fort Atkinson Site, Mountain Route Towards Colorado, Arkansas River Crossing, Colorado Mountain Route, Bent's Old Fort National Historic Site, Raton Passimaran Route Through Kansas Towards Oklahoma, Cimarron River, Cimarron National Grassland, New Mexico Mountain Route, Clifton House Cimarron Aztec Mill, Cimarron Plaza and Well, Philmont Scout Ranch, Cimarron Route, Kiowa National Grassland Joint Route, Fort Union National Monument, Pecos National Historical Park, Santa Fe, De Vargas Street House, oldest house in the USA, Northern Rio Grande National Heritage Area. Topic. See also Moe, Jackson County Historic Places Case, Johnson County Historic Places O.K., Cimarron County Historic Places N.M., Colfax County Historic Places Oregon California Trails Association Pawnee Rock Related National Park Units Fort Larned National Historic Site Bent's Old Fort National Historic Site Fort Union National Monument Santa Fe Trail Remains Santa Fe Trail Museum, part of the Trinidad History Museum Trailside Center Museum in Kansas City, Missouri Great Santa Fe Trail Horse Race Endurance Ride Scenic Byways in the United States Tree in the Trail <laughs>